there's a huge hole in our reviews, a fundamental flaw we haven't been able to fix for 10 years. Today, we're changing that with the biggest test we've ever done. And the goal of it is to answer what seems like a simple question. How long can I expect my new TV to last? For the last three years, we ran these TVs on and off every single day for hours and hours. And the time has finally come to turn them off, at least for now. Of the 102 TVs on the test, 20 of them failed outright, while 24 others experienced partial failures. So after three years of near continuous use, what can we actually take away from all this? Well, the good news is that the vast majority of TVs are free of issues for the first 10,000 hours of use. Of course, this will vary on how you use your TV, but on average, most TVs will last a good while before they start to break down. It's worth reminding you that our test only represents a small sample size, with just one unit of each model, so some results aren't statistically significant. For that reason, we can't really make broad claims about specific models or most brands. What we can say, though, is that every brand experienced some failures. Although brands like Toshiba, Amazon, and Insignia had a 100% failure rate, we only tested a handful of TVs from each of them, so it's not indicative of their overall longevity. Still, some brands fared incredibly well overall, including LG and TCL. LG TVs did have a high number of partial failures, but the amount of total failures was low. Likewise, only a single TCL TV failed, and that was only a few weeks before the end of the test. An impressive result. Looking at backlight type, there's a clear trend. Directlit and edgelit TVs with no local dimming had the most issues. Almost 60% of them experienced either partial or total failure. As we've pointed out before, the light guide plates on edgelit models are a common failure point, and in general, the majority of these TVs saw at least one LED die out during the test. TVs with full array backlights are a safer bet though about 25% of them still experienced LED failures. Since LEDs are often wired in series or groups, even small LED failures can lead to catastrophic ends. That means a handful of dead LEDs can make a TV unwatchable, either by taking out larger zones or taking out the backlight entirely. In some cases, LED failures can push a TV to go into a safe mode where it simply refuses to turn on. If we break it down by panel type, it looks at first glance like IPS panels perform the worst. However, most of the IPS panels on the test used edge lit or direct lit backlights, which account for their high percentage of failures. Meanwhile, it's clear that both QD OLEDs and W OLEDs perform very well. Remember when we said that LG performed really well overall? Well, it gets to bit. This gets the bit. It gets the bit, guys. Well, it gets a bit more nuanced when we take panel type into consideration. LG OLEDs in particular fared well, while their LCD models had more issues, specifically edge-lit models, offering some insight into LCD versus OLED reliability. But Marco, what about burn-in? Ah yes, the ever-persistent question of burn-in. It's worth noting that we designed this test intentionally to cause burn-in, so naturally, every OLED on the test experienced some burn-in within the first few months. But under normal circumstances, with mixed usage, burn-in isn't an issue. We repeat, burn-in is not an issue unless you deliberately torture test your TVs, like we did. Aside from that, we saw relatively few failures among OLEDs. Based on our test, they tend to last the longest and experience the fewest issues of any display technology. Finally, and interestingly, we didn't see a direct link between price and longevity. Some of the cheapest models lasted through the entirety of the test with no issues, while some of the more expensive TVs were among the first to fail. That's great news for everyone who asked us if expensive TVs really last longer than cheap ones. It means that if you're shopping for a new model, you shouldn't necessarily worry about buying from a lesser known brand or getting a budget model. While those TVs may have some issues earlier on as a result of less intensive quality control, those issues are more likely to appear during the warranty period. So, as long as you get a good unit, it should last you for many years. You can find a more detailed breakdown of every partial and complete failure on the test and why they failed on our website. One thing to note, even though many TVs only experienced partial failures, a lot of them were severe enough that the TV would be deemed unusable or replaceable in a real-world scenario. But since they could still technically display an image, they stayed on the test. 
While about 34% of all LCD TVs on the test had LED failures, uniformity issues also abound. Heat causes the internal layers of a TV to delaminate over time, which leads to a patchy image or even discoloration that can make a TV hard to watch. But what about repairability? Of the 20 total failures, we only repaired two of them to add them back to the test. While there were some that we could have repaired, many of those failures occurred late enough in the test that it wasn't worth it. The bigger picture is that most TVs just aren't designed to be repaired, especially by everyday consumers. Most failures occur outside the warranty window or at a point at which it just makes more sense to replace rather than repair. Even if you wanted to repair your TV, it's simply not worth the effort or risk, and price doesn't really factor in here either. If you thought a cheaper TV might be easier to fix, that's not necessarily true. While some use simpler assemblies, lower-end TVs often use double-sided foam tape to attach the LCD panel to the front of the TV. That makes it very difficult to access most of the internal components without removing the panel. Trying to then reattach the panel properly is just a recipe for disaster. Mid-range and higher-end models, meanwhile, tend to use either screws or clips, and you can typically access everything from the back without having to remove the panel from the front. That makes them a little easier to open up and put back together, but it still isn't something we recommend you do at home. And with that, an era has ended. Over 100 TVs, three years, during which we learned a lot about image retention and compensation cycles and why TVs fail over time. We've opened them up and reassembled them to bring you the valuable data that you can't get anywhere else. This is the biggest test we've undertaken so far, involving over a dozen ratings employees and thousands of work hours. And we've all come away a bit richer for it, in knowledge at least. Our energy bill though, might disagree. However, we have a lot more in store for you. We're still actively investigating some of the specific failure points we saw on the test, and we will likely publish what we find. As always, if there's anything you'd like to see from us, let us know in the comments. Or you can join our Discord server, where we often share results and interesting findings from everything we're working on. Until next time, I'm Marco from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best TV for your needs. Take care, everyone.